Hey, Fiberistas, welcome. I'm Stacy Budge Camison with Urban Gypsy, and today we are going to warp um, uh, some new weavings I'm gonna try out. I wanna make some wrapped bracelets with the uh, art weaving, and usually I do that with, uh, on when I'm doing that on, I'm gonna try it on my big rigid huddle loom, and usually when I do that, um, warp of my rigid huddle loom, I use a warping peg. Well, um, when I bought my, my other big loom, I got this warping board was part of the deal. And I've come to really like using this warping board. So I'm going to warp these bracelets on this warping board and I'm gonna demo that. But first I wanted to say, um, uh, if you like what I'm presenting today, uh, you can click on my Buy Me Coffee link down below and leave me a donation to support my channel or there's a little box in the chat and it's like a little, it's uh, on the right hand lower side and it's a little dollar sign in a box and you can hit and, and send me a donation through Super Chat which goes through YouTube. Anyway, so back to the bracelets. So one of my favorite bracelets that I have, of course that I don't have with me to show you, um, is like a wrapped leather bracelet. It's actually a tape measure, which I love because when I'm working on stuff and I'm wearing my bracelet, I can just measure my crafts. Like, you know, looking at my knitting stitches per inch or um, on my weaving, checking stuff with that. So, and I'll put a link down below. I got mine from Mass Drop, but I, I hear that some of the yarn stores and stuff have it, but I'll put a link in the show notes that shares with you that inspiration. But I wanna make some little art yarn bracelets. Um, now these bracelets based on that leather one that I'm making is about 18 inches long and it wraps around twice. So, um, I'm going to kind of replicate that with the art weaving and I'm going to make a bunch of them in one sitting. And that's only because I'm not really sure what I'm going to do as far as the fastener goes. And so I want to play with it a little bit. So... What I'm going to do, and now this is, I'm using my big 24 inch rigid head loom, and this is the rigid head I'm gonna use with it. It's a uh, uh, 10 dents per inch, which is gonna make it a uh, sort of a densest, dense, dense-ish, <laughs> dense-like fabric. Um, Cause I want these to be a little on the, the sturdier side, kind of like that leather is. It's not going to be as sturdy as leather, but you know what I mean? Anyway. Um, and I'm wondering if you guys can hear me, if you guys can hear me hit, hit, send me a chat. I'm of course, if you can't hear me, then, then I don't know. Usually you guys let me know if you can't hear me. I have a new setup right now. I'm using going off my phone because I had to come and warp over on over here, so I'm not at my computer. Okay, 10 dents per inch. So I'm going to, what I wanna do is the, the bracelets are gonna be about an inch wide. And I'm going to do six bracelets across. Um, I'll work on six of them at a time. And in between each bracelet, I'm gonna have two inches. So I'm gonna, so that's gonna be three inches times six is 18. So it's not gonna fill up this completely, but it's gonna be pretty, pretty much there. Yes, you can hear me. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Helen, yay. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm also gonna make the bracelets about, since I, I said that they're, you know, finished size is gonna be about 18 inches. I'm gonna give myself plenty of room to figure out that fastener. It might be that I'm tying things. It might be that I add a button. I'm not really sure what I wanna do. So I'm gonna give myself lots of room in between these bracelets um, to, to figure out what I'm gonna do. So I'm going to put about 18 inches in between the bracelets. So it'll be 18 inches plus 18 inches, which makes it an even yard. So that makes it, uh, that makes it easy. So, and I know this is a lot of math, <laughs> sorry. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is the, uh, so a yard per bracelet, six across. Um, so if I've got 10 dents per inch, that means I'm gonna have to have 10 warp threads per bracelet. And the warp threads are gonna have to be at least a yard long per bracelet. Uh, yeah, you know, to take into consideration the, how I'm going to treat the 
fastener or whatever it's going to be. And I'm going to just do three bracelets deep. So that's three yards deep by six. And there's 10 warp threads per six. So I'm doing, that'll be 60 warp threads that I'm pulling together that'll be three yards deep. Anyway, <laughs> maybe I'll put that in a worksheet and so you guys can go back and reference that um, if you're watching this again. So I'll put, I'll put that down in some kind of PDF to make it a little clearer. Anyway, all right, so what I'm doing, when I was warping what, this a project, I've made some dish towels. And, you know, usually when you're warping on, on something like this, you're taking one warp thread and you're doing it up and back and all that stuff. Well, if you're using different yarns, you can hold those yarns together and and do the warping on the board itself. And that way when you're putting, when you're slaying the reed, um, the, the rigid heddle, then you're taking groups of however many those different yarns and, and putting them in at once, if that makes sense. So, so what I'm gonna do is I'm taking these, can I say five, I have six yarns here. I'm taking these five cone yarns and these are all mill this is a uh, this is one of the sock yarns I used to dye and then I've got some mill ends this is a I don't think this is a mill end this is a regular look yarn that I bought from Earth Guild and then this is something I found at the thrift store <laughs> and then these are mill ends from uh, Earth Guild too and I'm gonna wind these together and then I have this one sparkle yarn and this is this is not really um sturdy enough to use alone as a warp thread but i like to like put it together with one of these and add a little bit of sparkle in there so i'm going to do that and so i'm going to be doing since these there are technically five warp threads here and i need 10 i'm going to be doing two groupings of these um to equal to, for one bracelet all right, so that would mean that I'm doing um, 12 passes. So I'm going to go up and back 12 times, and it needs to be three yards deep. And I'm going to add a little bit extra for, for um, loom waste. I'll add, I'm going to add another yard. So I'm going to do four yards um, on this, this thing. Now, uh, not everybody has access to a, a, a warping board. If, if you've got like a Kromsky harp, they have the pegs that you can put on the back of that rigid heddle loom, and that makes a warping board. You can also do that with, um, I think there's a, a couple of brands that picked up that idea and is doing that same thing. So anyway, I'm checking the comments as we're going. Yeah, so PDF would be great. Good, because I know I threw a lot of math at you guys. I'm so sorry. Anyway, but hey, everybody, and thanks for joining. Okay, so the first thing I do is I'm going to take, and like I said, if you're doing on a smaller loom, well, even, you know, I've even used the warping peg with my bigger rigid head loom, and that works just fine. Um, but I'm going to show you how to do it with, if you want to use the warping board on the back of those looms. Okay, so I just have a, uh, I'm going to take this guide yarn and I'm just going to kind of measure out four yards just roughly. I know this is a yard. So one, two, three, four. I'll give myself a little bit to tie on. All right, so I'm going to start here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a path on on this warping board. This is how I want it to, to, to go. And there's four yards. So it's going to end right here. Okay, that's about four yards right there. So this is just to kind of guide me as I'm winding that on so I'll know which way I'm going. My cross is going to be right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cross it. If I were doing, if I were doing one yarn at a time, 
I would be going back and forth and making sure there's a cross. The cross is going, you know, back this way, back that way, back this way, back that way. And that cross is going to determine the sequence of how you're picking up that yarn. All right. But here, like I said, I'm using all of these different yarns and I'm going to put them here so I can spool them off really easily. So here are my, I say five, but it's really six because this is my, the yarn I'm going to put with another one. And I need to go six passes up and back or that's going to be 12. So that's, you know, one, two, three, four, five, you know, like that. Okay. Does that make sense? Do you guys have any questions? I'm going to look. Anyway, let me know if you have any questions. I've got my uh, comments right here. All right, so I'm just gonna take these ends and kind of bunch them together here. It's one. Oop. Oh, I made a big old knot right there. Look at that. Let's see if I can unknot that. All right, there we go. There's three, so that's one, two, three. Oh. This one, it's in here. Put this together. Oh, I've already had that one on there. One, two, three, oh, do this one. I don't have much of this, but I'm not doing that many yards, so I think we'll be fine. If not, I'll have to like tie something on. <laughs> All right, let's see. Oh, okay. And one more in. Hopefully this isn't going to be a big hot mess. It could be. All right. So as you can see, I've got, that's the cluster. And, and so I'm just going to, and as I go through, it's, I'm going to be slaying, you know, these five or six, well, six with the little um, carrier thread, these five at once. So I'm going to go ahead and tie a little knot in these together for right now. And then I'm going to tie it on to... Tie it onto right here, okay? So I'm gonna take these. Oh, that's gonna be a problem. Ugh. All right. So I'm going. I'm following the path of my guide yarn. I'm going up, and I'm moving slowly because I'm pulling from these these different these different spools at once. Okay, this one's on top of this other side. All right, so that's one. <laughs> and so we're going down and this is two. All right, so you see when I come here, since I went, I want to cross over here. So as opposed to going under this one, I'm going to go over so it crosses. Okay, very gently. Get some more slack. All right, we're going to three and then going again to make a cross. I'm going back across. Three, 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 I'm going back down 
one for four. 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 All right, and again, I'm, I'm making the cross here. And I'll move the camera so you can see what the cross, what I mean by the cross. All right, going back up for five. Oops, that just broke. Right, you know what, I'm just gonna tie this off and put a little knot in there. And I'll just have to deal with that knot when I get to it in the, in the, um, when I'm weaving. All right. But with art weaving, that's so forgiving, so it might be okay. All right. Five. Coming back down for six. Super Michigan. Hey, Super Michigan. <laughs> six. 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 All right, making that cross again. All right. Going back up for seven. Seven, 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 coming back down for eight. Oh, it broke again, goodness, okay. Where are we at? Oh, here we go. That kind of makes me worried about this yarn as far as durability goes. I'm gonna have to think about that. Hmm. I'll have to keep you guys posted on that. All right, we said we're doing down to eight. 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 All right, making that cross again, going back up for nine. Back down for ten. 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 Oh, making sure I get that cross in there. Going back up for eleven. And then coming back down for 12. Uh, gotta go, we'll catch you. Okay, see you on the replay. 11, 12, okay. So here we are at 12 and I'm gonna tie this off and I'm gonna show you what this looks like on a little closer up. All right, I have my scissors right here. Okay, 
let me grab this. All right, so let me show you, as you can see right here, how it, it, how it crosses, how this is going down, this is going down this way. That's, that's what I mean by the cross, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab, I'm going to grab these right here, and you see how that kind of keeps, let's see if I can show you, that kind of keeps them separated right there. And what I'll do is take those different bunches that keeps those, let's see if I get this back on there, keeps those um, groupings together. So I'm just taking five at a time and, and warping through the, the, um, the reed and, and then tying and then, you know, securing that as I go across. So that's it. That's how I do the warp on this warping board. And what I'll do is, here, I'll do this right now, I'll show you. So actually for this part right here, what I like to do is get two different colors of contrasting yarn and cut two little sections. So I've got four ties. And I will, all right, so what I'll do is I'll take and I'll put like the blue ties on this front end and the yellow ties on this back end and secure each little section of this cross. So then that way, that way if it kind of comes undone as I'm trying to, to get it to the, um, trying to get it uh, onto the loom, then I'm not losing my mind. And this is especially important if you're doing, if you've got like a bigger warp. But this is just a bunch of, this is gonna be six tiny warps. So that is secured, and then that way I'll be able to deal with it when, when it's time. I'm just going to cut these. I wanted to do it from that other end. Okay, so let me just tie a knot in this for right now. All right. <laughs> Start from the other end. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to cut these. And then I'm just going to do a chain. I'm going to make sure I don't have my guide thread in there. And I'm just going to do like a, like you would a crochet chain and just chain that together to kind of keep that warp into place. not worried about those that cross because I've got the the ties holding that cross into place and there you have it all right so there's my warp ready all right so I don't know if you guys can see that warp ready to put on the loom to make bracelets all right, so that's what I have for you today. All right, let me see if there's any questions. I just started to warping my loom as I switched you on. Ugh, oh, Lynn, there you have it. Yay! <laughs> um, all right, I'm going to give it a minute to see if there's any more questions. But that's pretty much it. And so I'll put this on the loom, and, and maybe um, once I get it on the loom, I'll do a live sharing with you progress on those bracelets so all right I'm not seeing any more questions so if that's it um again if, if you if you like what I shared today then by all means hit me up with a buy me a coffee link down below and I will see you guys next week I hope you're having a good time talk to you later bye now Oop, right here